I'm just looking at your physical appearance and I'm just thinking to myself, I'm like, how many hours do you spend daily at the gym? <laughs> like, well, fortunately for me, I own a gym, so I can stay there as long as I want. I think for me, you know, now it's harder because I'm coaching nonstop. When I started coaching, it really stopped me from training the way I wanted to train. As a, as a pro fighter, I was training two, three times a day, you know, for six, seven days a week. I was a maniac. And I've, I was like that since I, you know, 14, 13, 14 years old, you know, getting ready for college football, high school football, so on and so forth. But now, you know, the goal for me is to maintain my strength, you know, show the abilities that I have as an athlete still so that it can correlate over to when I coach. So when the athletes see me do something, they know, OK, he knows how to do it, too. I walk the walk and talk the talk. I know mindset is a very important thing to you. Where was it kind of in the early teenage years mm -hmm. and where is it and where is it today? I've always been driven. I've always had a goal. I've always had a vision of what I wanted to accomplish. So that's not new to me. I think the only thing that I would say now being 34 is that I have better self-awareness. You know, I know exactly what I need to do, how I need to do it. When I was a kid, it was just like, get after it. You know, hard work, effort. And those are things that you can always control. For me now, it's like controlling those variables, controlling the what I can control as opposed to worrying about the things that I can't. And so mindset wise, I'm able to understand that I had the abilities, I have the know-how, I have the skill set because of acquired, it's acquired through the time that I spent in the gym or in the books. And for me, knowing yourself is key, right? So if I know my talents, I know what God has given me, what I've been able to do on this earth. And now increasing that over time, that allows me to stay mentally locked in, you know, and not do things that are outside of the realm of my, of my grasp, you know, and see exactly what I can do to progress that, you know, my goals in life are still always going to be there, right? If I accomplish a goal, then the next one's going to be right there. And for me, I think that I have these astronomical goals, but they're attainable if I can understand the strategy, put together the tactics, and have a system in place. And when you have that, you're gonna be successful. Why do you find that knowing yourself is such an important element of your journey in life? It's a good question. You know, I, I think it's because of the fact that when you know who you are, you know where you wanna go, and you know what you're gonna to need to do to get there. You know, so for me, like I said, that was the major turning point in my life when I found out exactly what I needed to do because of who I was, right? And peeling back the layers of talent, right? So there's things that, okay, yeah, I'm athletic. You know, I have the ability to communicate, but why? You know, and you just keep asking yourself why. And if you have passion to help people, then you're going to be in a good position to do so. But if you don't have that passion, then it's you have to go a different route. And when I was a fighter, you have... As a fighter, as an athlete, you have to be very selfless or selfish, I should say. As a coach, you need to be selfless. And when I found out that I wanted to take care of people and help people, there, there was that switch. And I was trying to juggle two different sides of myself. Whereas I wanted to be an athlete, I wanted to be successful in my own right, but then I wanted to take care of the people that looked upon me to help them. And so for a long time, I was juggling three things at once, trying to manage a business, trying to train athletes, and then also train myself. And if you're doing so much at once, and there's not a, a true focus point, at least for a particular amount of time, those things are gonna be successful. They're not gonna be wins. So you take a couple of L's and you learn in that process of, okay, what do I need to change? What do I need to pivot out of in order for me to be successful in my own right? When I know myself, I know exactly what I need to do and how I need to block out the noise in order for me to focus in on the task. And then when you can focus and you clear away all the clutter, you can see the vision in its full transparency and go for it. A-list actors, top hedge fund guys, mm -hmm. um, they'll have days where it's rough in their mind. Mm -hmm. And I think that going back to that kind of self-awareness, if you kind of put that light on it, if you don't ever look at it, then it can eat you up inside. True. But the more tools, I think of like tools and a tool belt, really, really relating to kind of what you're saying, 
you know, writing it down, you know, high, high goals. Yep. And that's what I've seen on the top performers in this world. Mm -hmm. They have super focus yeah. on what they can do, right? I mean, I'm sure that's what you've seen. It's the X factor, man. It's like tuning out all the clutter and the noise. You know, um, I've worked with, you know, the best athletes in the world, the best fighters in the world, world champions, and the greatest thing that they're able to do, and I, and I separate them from good to great because good fighters are good. They have the talent, they have the athletic ability, they may have the skill set, uh, but they don't have the mental capacity to withstand the noise. Mm -hmm. And the ones that can, they block that out. Even on the biggest stages, they're able to do so and perform at a high level. Mm -hmm. So you have to look at yourself as a high performer, no matter what you're doing. But it takes somebody to understand, like, this is my job. This is what I've been put here to do. This is what I get paid to do. I need to take advantage of the situation and block out all the other things that aren't going to get me to my end goal, right? And then you got to figure out what's your why, you know? Why are you doing this? And it could be for a greater cause. You may be washing, uh, washing cars or bussing tables, but it's for an end goal. It's not just to do that as an end mean, right? It's to give you the money or to give you the capital to go ahead and do other things that you want to achieve. So figuring out your why is so important, whether yeah. that be intrinsic or whether that be for other things. Certain athletes, what is happening? Is there just a moment in time as a coach that you've seen and you've separated them that it just kind of clicks, that you know that their DNA has shifted? Mm -hmm. What exactly is happening in those moments? I believe that they are finding out their true purpose. Mm. I think they figured out a way to calculate the next steps by understanding why they've been put here. I think when you find your purpose in life in general, like what exactly are we doing here? Why are we actually here itself? And whatever your thoughts are, whatever your beliefs are, it's really finding that one particular aspect of your thought process. And then from there, it's putting together a game plan just like you would in any fight just like you would in any sport, right? We have to figure out what's going to be the best way to win this game, and that's the game of life. So I have my almost 17-year-old and my 15-year-old. My 15-year-old, one day, he just clicked on to hitting the gym. Do you find any, any drawbacks at kind of 15 hmm. for, for him to really, you know, go into this kind of lifestyle? If you look at it as it just going to the gym, then it could be, I don't want to say an issue, but the goal really is just to develop a routine, right? Develop a lifestyle that's healthy. Because he could be doing, not just your son, but any kid at that age could be doing worse things than, than doing that, right? Primarily, it's just finding a healthy way to have a strategic approach to life, mm. right? Creating habits. Yeah. And with those habits, they will transfer over. They will have high correlation over to life. Whether that be in business, whether that be in his home life as a, as a man, as a, as a husband, you know, as a father. You create those habits based off of the routines that you've gained over your young years. Right. And that's what happened with me. Like, I think that sports actually changed my, my life and my, my mindset because I could have did way worse. And I could have went down a path, you know, way worse than where it was. Yeah. And having sports as a means to understand teamwork having the understanding of I need to be there for my, my teammates. On top of that, it gets you to understand, okay, I need to be scheduled. I need to have a routine there. I need to make sure that I'm practicing, so accountability. And then giving yourself the opportunity to give out effort that is going to teach you down the line. Like Things aren't always going to be sweet. And you got to be able to withstand those hardships. You got to be able to push away the governor in your mind telling you to stop. Those are the things that it gained in the weight room, in the gym, as a sport, with jujitsu, same concept. Mm -hmm. So with kids, and I have, I have three of my own, putting them in sports or any type of activity that's going to teach them how to have that and create a habit is going to be important. It's something that everybody should master, right, is, is having that ability to understand 
okay, what's the next goal? What's the next step? And how do I approach it with a schedule? How do I approach it with that habit that's going to take me to the next level? What do you, what do you, what would you recommend someone that's starting? You know, someone that's starting, he's just um, down on his luck, mm -hmm. um, whether it's financially or at the gym. And because yeah. I always saw that the start is always the hardest. Sure. Gaining the momentum is. Gaining the hardest, momentum yeah. seems to be the hardest. What would yeah. you, like practical tip? Well, I'll give you that, but I, I would also say this. I don't mean to cut you off. I no, think no. gaining the momentum, but then also battling back from L's, right? Mm. Or hitting a peak and then not knowing where to go after that. Mm. Or, you know, you get there, you hit a wall, and now it's time to pivot. And now you got to start all over again. Yeah. So from the start, though, yeah, you just got to gain momentum. And how you gain momentum is just get little wins here and there. Whether, whether that be making your bed, you know how Jordan Peterson says that all sure. the time, right? Doing your laundry, you know, little wins throughout the day allows you to have some type of purpose. It gives you some level of accomplishment, right? Going to the gym is, is one of those things. And I, and I hate to say I don't, I'm going to be sound like a meathead, but it is what it is. I, that's what I grew up doing. So yeah. using that as a, as a form of, of a win, right? Yeah. I've gotten up early just to get up early because it's a win. You know, it's something that I probably didn't want to do but because... I overcame that that mentality of okay, I can rest. You know, um, I've over overcame you know the the abilities or the non abilities to to not succeed. You know, the goal is to always find a way to triumph. The goal is to always find a way to make it to the next step. Yeah. So that helps a lot. And then when you have to pivot, it's just knowing thyself. Same concept, right? Having self awareness. I've been able to pivot accordingly. So like again. Perfect example, I wanted to play in the NFL. I'm 5'8", 205. It's hard fetch to find me playing in the NFL. Now, there's some guys that have done it. But with injuries and things like that, personal issues with my family, stopped that, derailed that. So then from there, I'm like, okay, well, I still want to compete. I still want to be an athlete. Just pivot on over to being an MMA fighter. And then from there, okay, well, damn, I got eight concussions from an extreme of, you know, from football all the way to MMA. Now I can't. I can't fight anymore. What do I do? Okay, we'll pivot into coaching. Mm -hmm. So there's always ways to still progress. The problem is, is that people, when they feel like, okay, I've, I've, I've tried and I tried and I got up to that, to that pinnacle of where I could be, and then it just dropped me back down, and now they feel hopeless. Mm -hmm. They don't have any purpose anymore. They feel like they have no purpose. It's mastering the pivot is really a pivotal thing that you need to accomplish. If you're trying to find the elite athlete in your coaching, um, it's the guy that's, it's no ma it seems like it's no matter what, but it's probably just him against him and the conversation that he's having in his mind and the time when exactly he has to perform with tremendous pressure. And most of the time, that's what it is. Right. And, you know, it's funny that you say that because, like, in fighting, I think it gets oversaid and overstated a lot where it's, like, it's 90% mental, but it truly is a high percentage of you got to have the right mentality to go in there and actually fight. And that's in any sport, anything, anything in, line, in life, really. When you're trying to level up and be successful, people get in their own way, man. That's the problem. And that's where those little wins come into play because you have a past record of how you can accomplish things. Mm. But if you never have those, you don't know that you ha you're capable of doing it. You put yourself consistently in those positions so it becomes second nature. Right. So in the beginning, when you first start walking, you don't know how to walk. You fall a bunch of times, right? You may be a little bit nervous. I don't know. You got to go back to when you're a baby. But at the goal is whenever you do something new, it's a little nerve wracking. Mm -hmm. But I'm guaranteeing you that the, the guys that jump out of planes on a consistent basis, it's like a walk in the park mm -hmm. where somebody like myself, I go there, I'm a little bit at, on edge, right? Because I haven't done it that much. Same thing in jujitsu. Like when you first start and somebody's trying to choke you out, your first instinct is to just like flail around and try to get out of it. But you know when you're in a bad position, you know when you're in an okay position, and you know that you need to get out. And yeah. that comes through having unconscious competence and knowing everything that's going on around you. And that's why guys at the level that you're at know how to stay focused and they know how to stay controlled and calm in the face of that adversity, for sure. And that's the same thing that happens when you put yourself every day in a state of adversity it becomes second nature and now you can deal with it. So you keep yourself really busy so the noise in your head doesn't have a chance to sneak yeah. up on you, mm -hmm. right? Just action. Yeah. Action exactly. towards, 
towards specific short and long-term goals. I believe in that, but I also believe in uh, living in that fear a little mm. bit too. You know, soaking that fear up yeah. and accepting it, but overcoming it in a sense of, I know it's here, I know what I'm feeling, but I can get through it. As opposed to just blocking all of it out and, neg and basically saying that it's not there, it's not there, it's not there. It is there, Yes. you know? And when you go to competition, it is there. But it's how you cope with mm -hmm. that situation is really what is the key. Yeah. The biggest thing that I've been able to do with this platform and with my brand is help coaches from around the world. So I'm globally recognized for my methods and my protocols based on combat sports training. I've been able to mentor over 5,000 coaches from around the world. It's humbling for me to say that because people actually are interested in the things that I do, which is awesome, right? Yeah. But now I want to bring those people into my actual place that I work, mm -hmm. right? How I actually do things from a day-to-day -day basis. And when you can see that, you can see how I communicate with athletes. It's a different feel than me just going to a, do a seminar. For sure. And putting things online and so, so on and so forth. So we're focusing on athletes that want to make it and take it to the next level. We're giving them a platform so that they can be recognized. There's yeah. a lot of great athletes out, out here. You know, it's South Florida. Sure. We're, we're home of athletes. Yeah. The goal for me is to use my platform, my reach, my networking, and my, my credentials to help drive more attention to these young athletes so that they can get out of the position that they're in. And then on top of that, bring some positivity to the community. Is there something in the near future that you're uh, really excited about? There's a lot, but the, the thing that I'm really excited about is the program and actual process that we've been building for the past two years, actually, with Timberland, mm. the record producer. And the reason why is because when I met him, Tim, and he's been working with an uh, individual out here, uh, David Alexander, for a long time. Dave took him to where he needed to go and, and gave him the opportunity to, like I said, I guess, adopt this new mindset. And, um, and I just helped correlate that. And then for me, my goal was to get him moving better, feeling better, and again, increasing his level of confidence. And it was funny because I walked in here and I was a little late. Sorry about that, guys. Yeah. Okay. But he was on the call and he was just excited about the situation. So we're doing something called Pushing Peaks. And basically what that means is that we're trying to level up. We're trying to level up our fitness, trying to level up our health, our mentality, our mindset, creating a positive mindset to um, take it to the next level. When it comes down to whether it's business, whether it's your sport, whatever the case. For me, looking at it um, from the outside in, like as he started with me, there was a there was a level of insecurity that he had, but now he's, he's yeah. killing it, you know? And on top of that, he's a hard worker. He's one of the hardest workers that I've ever coached. And we're talking about guys that I've trained that are at the elite level world champions, mm -hmm. and he's right there with them when it comes down to effort. Because you can't get to that level of success without that. So Amazing. you could see it, it was awesome.